Greetings, and bienvenue, mine crew. Thank you for returning to this broadcast. And welcome to new viewers joining us for the first time. If you like a video, then feel free to subscribe. Hello, X. I would like to share with you my story. Please be forgiving of my English, as I have not been speaking at all my years. Story was not pre-typed. So please kindly bear with me, I would really like to share this with outsiders. First, backstory. I live in a small settlement in rural Japan. Only four houses, yet in an unfortunate area. My nearby forest, Akigahara has a reputation for being the place of many dead, where people go to end their lives. Akigahara is popular, so everyone assumes they know everything about it. But in truth what troubles us most is not the death in it, but what it brings. In Japan, there is belief that spirits reside within all things. Just that some things have stronger spirits. A spirit is not like a world popular ghost who haunts and takes revenge. The spirits are apparitions who are just like people. Some are very innocent and just confused and cannot find peace. Others are malicious out of being lonely. They manipulate reality around them so that the living can join them or at least entertain them. For me, many strange things occur due to my area of residence. And my mentor taught me how to reason with the spirits. We'll tell about my mentor later on, here is my family story. I live with my mother, young sister Ikumi, and my only neighbors are my mentor and his son, who is like a brother to me. Two houses are also abandoned, and are said to contain the spirits of malicious yakai-like monsters but of Japan. So we are forbidden from entry. Six years ago, my sister went alone to Aikigahara without telling me. But I had a habit of reading her diary because she detailed how she hears the voices of ancestors. When she disappeared, I knew she went to Aikigahara. I alerted my father and he went there for her. Night and day pass, Ikumi returns and is silent. I try to speak to her but she stares blankly and does not respond. She locks herself in her room and scribbles in her diary. Day and night, like she does not sleep. Ikumi comes out after two days. I try to inquire what she has seen or why she is going, she says nothing. She walks through the house, checking every room and then finally speaks. Where is father? I fall silent. I do not know how I should respond, so I just tell her he went looking for her. In Aikigahara, her face goes grim. And she sits on the floor and begins crying, she repeats that he should not have gone. That she has made a promise. I ask her and she falls silent again. I nag her for many hours, until she finally agrees to tell me something. I witnessed them. Many yakai came to me in my path. First came the Akatiko, and to him I made a promise. Akatiko is a yakai of the forest, the hand of a child and his mother. The hand of the child is red and it hangs from the trees. At the bottom of the tree from which the hand hangs, hover the apparition of a woman who lures to her the children who she witnesses. It is believed she wishes to trade the life of a living child to return her own. Ikumi does not tell me what the promise was, but I believe it was something for her life to not be taken by the Akatiko. Days pass, father does not come. Ikumi slowly becomes more distant, writing in her diary for days. Mother leaves an offering for the spirits and ancestors at the entrance of Akigahara, prays for the life of father. At night, I hear a rustling noise, I follow the sound and reach the door of Ikumi's room. I press my ear at the door and I hear her converse with a deep voice. The price is small to pay, we solemnly promise that he will not be devoured by Jikaninki. All you must do is set us free. Jikaninki are spirits of people who are greedy and selfish. They are trapped between the living and dead world and as punishment must devour the flesh of deceased humans. If not they endure great pain. Sister and voice argue. She does not agree, until the voice says. One paid the price, many more will if you do not. Not only will he find rest, but in your sacrifice you will free your family. Then, complete silence fell. I am shaking. I run back into my room and bury myself under blanket and stare in dark all night. Unable to sleep. Morning arrives. I greet Ikumi, she pleads me to forgive her and I inquire for what. She falls silent. Mother is still asleep. Ikumi just walks out the door. I try to stop her. She runs away toward the forest, too afraid to chase her. I go home and read her diary. Here is the entry. Tonight he spoke to me again. 
His offer was clear, my soul takes the place of many others. I do not wish to cause anguish to my family, so I will accept his plea. Tomorrow I return to the circle and finish what I had long ago started. I made the mistake and now I pay for it so that others do not. The mistake in question is detailed in her first diary. That is when she began writing of voices. Ikimi would engrave her wishes and desires on trees. She never dared to do so inside Akigahara in fear of desecrating spirits. But there was a time when she was very upset and wished nothing but for everyone to die and let her be. She inscribed it on a tree. But that tree was a Kodama, the spirit of a tree and of echoes. Cutting the bark of the Kodama is like to seal a deal. You are cursed, but the curse is lifted if you find a way to compensate Kodama. The Kodama are very jealous. And the Kodama of the area outside Akigahara are especially jealous wishing to be a home for many other spirits like the Kodama of Akigahara are. Ikimi had an idea. She would trap apparitions within a lantern of bamboo and release them with the Kodama outside the forest, fulfilling his wish. Unfortunately, Ikimi's heart faltered. She had grown full of fear as she bound spirits to the lantern. That is a very forbidden act. She left the lantern there in the forest. In her diaries, she details how the voices of spirits she bound ravage her mind, assaulting her constantly with thoughts of death and fear. She speaks of the way she communes in her dreams, and how she wishes it would end. Now, she went to free them, true to assume that it would be at the price of her life. I am certain now that my father is dead, and Ikimi will be soon too. Mother falls very ill, and eventually drifts into a state of slumber. I know she is not dead, because she was breathing. Next to us there was a house where a man and his son lived, who were my only friends. They took care of me while my mother was asleep. Three days pass since mother falls asleep, and Ikimi returns. I am shocked to see her alive, but it is almost as if she is not. She does not speak and has the same look on her face at all times. She just entered her room and did not come out. I have been very confused what has happened in the forest, but I did not dare ask. Again she wrote, day and night. I did not interrupt, mother was asleep still, and I began being at neighbor's home more and more. Years pass, Ikimi never speaks. I have not read her diary anymore until yesterday. Meanwhile, the father of a neighbor friend becomes my mentor. He knows much about Yakai and he teaches me all he knows. I learn to speak with the energies that surround us and gain more knowledge of what my sister had done to herself and the spirits. Mother passed away in her slumber a week ago. Mentor takes me and Ikumi as his children. Ikumi still does not speak. She will not leave our house. I go live with a mentor and Ikumi stays alone. Always writing. Yesterday. She comes to Mentor's house, taps on my hand and hugs me. She still does not speak, but she shows me signs. First, waving her finger to say do not do that. Then she presses her open palms together and opens them like a book. Then she points at herself. I ask her, don't open your diary. She nods, hugs me and leaves. That day, she walks into the forest for presumably the last time, as she is wearing Mother's white wedding dress. All night it stormed heavy rain and thunder. In the middle of the night I could not bear it and I go back to our house. Now the third empty out of the only four. I enter my sister's room and there is a stack of brown notebooks on her bed, which she used for diary. I read all night, have many more to read. We'll post here what I think is interesting. First, time stamp with notebooks. It would sadden me if you were to discredit my authenticity and disbelief, as it takes much to share it. Sorry for the delay, friends. We are grieving the losses of both my mother and my sister, and I went to place an offering to their souls. I return now, and here is the beginning of the first entry she wrote when she came home from the forest after mother been ill. I will only show section to protect Ikumi's respect as the diary has many of her personal troubles that she would not want me to share. Here she wrote, They say it is not yet my time to die. They say I must not speak even a single word. Here is more I can tell you. Internet access here is very poor. And we are against social media, as we believe sharing our faces with the whole world leads to less worth of our inner circle. So here we only browse the net to study. There are no schools nearby. So all our knowledge comes from here. We fish our food at the lakes surrounding Fuji. And we run generators of solar power and water energy to power what little electricity we use. 
and water we bring in buckets from the lakes for showers. The internet taught me many things of different cultures and to write English. Although not perfectly, it is a good tool. My sister had more twisted interests. She always wished for a stronger connection with the dead. Her old computer, which had its power supply burnt, had folders with images of hunged people, pools of blood, photos of graveyards. Ikimi was very interested in all that revolves around death and the means to achieve it. Diaries. Also, were the biggest fascination of Ikimi. Even before she could not speak anymore. She did not speak much, and when she did she would do so with a very quiet and gentle voice. So, she let everything out in brown notebooks. She had many of them. They were sent to her from a friend in the city who was our only outside contact. Ikimi was very protective of her diary, computer, and room in general, and while she was alive I have only been to it numerous times. Friends, I am leaving the old house now. It is very cold. I will not take the diaries with me as it would desecrate the memory of Ikumi. I will write to you what I remember reading that I think is all right to share. Please understand and forgive me. Here is the most personal entry I would be willing to share. I will not go into details, as this entry and a few before and after it detail a romance Ikumi developed with the spirit of a young man. They detail her desires and I would not want to disrespect her. But here is what I can write. His name is Haiki. He whispered it to me by the grove. How beautiful he was. I gasped for air at the sight of him. When I stood close to him, it was not like the other spirits. Instead of cold through my body I felt warmth. He understood me. I did not have to speak, only think. He would whisper directly into my head. I look at him and heard his voice within me. I dreamed of joining him, to unite with the man who thought of death as I did. We spoke often. I would leave Freya Kigahara at night and he would protect me from all the apparitions. When I entered the forest he would be made manifest before my eyes and ward me from malicious and treacherous spirits. He loved me, as I did him. Each night I dreamt of him and it was the only dream that was not a nightmare. I loved Ea Kigahara because of his presence. It made the bones littered by the roots seem like a mere means to ward off those who would not understand what it means to exist. His words were the only truth to my ears. He was my family, more than my own. I apologized to him profusely, for forcing him not to pass on as he wants to stay with me but I am too afraid to take my own life. He forgives. He understands. He would rather not have peace and have me than be separated from me, or to have me killed. I made many mistakes in that forest. I have angered spirits of all ages and forms. But he continues to protect me. Many times he bore my punishments and endured pain for me. Haiki paid for my mistakes. He kept me alive just so we could spend more time together. He did not agree for any harm to come to me. If it weren't for Haiki's love, my entire family would be long dead, with me being the first. I do not regret that this is the life I've been given. It is my destiny. I am living proof that love transcends the physical realm. Haiki makes me feel things I have never felt before. In my head are thoughts of what Haiki and I could do together if we were to exist in the same plane of life. The next part I will omit. Since it contains sexual content which is composed of Ikumi's fantasies which I do not want to share in the sake of her respect. Next entry is just titled Bones. No date. Human bones scare humans because they show them how futile is the physical world. When looking at the remnants of a long-deceased person, I see proof that this life is meaningless. Yet when I see the spirits of the forest I know what is truly the essence of a human. The soul is what lives, the body is a vessel to contain it. I am not afraid of bones, they tell me nothing new. I already know this life is but a fraction of what comes after it. It would be a mistake to believe that death is the end, as death is truly just a gate towards what is above our mortal understanding. Life is a root tangled around our feet. It binds us to this realm and closes off so much potential knowledge. I wish I would have the courage to rid myself of this burden, but Haiki does not allow it, and I myself cannot bear to do it. No harm can come to me in Aokigahara. Malicious spirits told Haiki I use him as a shield and have no interest in him, but that is not the truth. I love him truly. One day the hand that writes this will be bones, and the energy that gave rise to what is written will be above this limitation. Next few entries speak of the lantern. I will combine together what I remember. I once had a lantern, crafted of bamboo by grandfather. He said to me before passing away, Ikumi, often we look at a lantern as something that repels darkness by bringing light. 
Do not let that belief cloud your memory of the knowledge that without darkness, there cannot be light. To this lantern I gave a name, Heiko. Heiko is the Japanese word for equilibrium, but not a physical balance. More of an equal connection to two sides of a spectrum. Heiko gave me light when I wrote late at night, until Heiko received a purpose more grand. In my rage, I wished death upon all the living. I felt frustrated as they did not allow me to go to Aikigahara to meet with Heiki during the day. I give my wishes to the trees, so that they get meaning and are rooted after my time has passed. In my anger, I did not ask permission of the tree before giving it my wish. And that proved to be a mistake. The tree sent echoes in my mind. It spoke to me and said, You are selfish, carving your wish in my flesh. Now you must fulfill my wish. Or wherever you go, malicious spirits will scream in your mind. The tree ordered me to go into the forest, trap spirits who find refuge in the other trees, and make them settle in his own roots and leaves. I promised to do so, as I knew Heike can protect my body, but not my mind. I took Heiko with me into the forest, there I met Heike and told him of what commenced. Heike told me that doing as the tree asked would upset the spirits greatly, but he told me that he would rather have the spirits upset where he can protect me than have them tear at my soul. Just as I thought, Heike always understands me. I took Heiko to a tree in the center of the grove where I met Heike. He came with me to guard me. I chanted a plea for the spirits to leave the tree. This particular one was riddled with them. The tree had many nooses hung from its thick branches. Some nooses had the former shells of the forest's many visitors. I raised Heiko high above my head, and light flickered in it as from the roots of the tree rose the apparitions of lovers, holding hands. I pleaded with them to enter the lantern, with the promise of a new home outside of the forest, where the battles between different spirits would not concern them. They agreed on the terms that they will get to remain together. I promised them that I will not separate between them, and they rose up and into my lantern. I felt great unease. Next, rose the spirit of a child. He was crying, perhaps he did not choose his fate. I felt very bad for trapping him, as I did not even plead. I just chanted for him to join with the other souls in the lantern and join he did. Next, the ground shook, and a tall man missing a hand manifested from the stump. As I asked him to enter the lantern I began stuttering. He was inches from my face and I felt my innards beginning to freeze. Heike hissed at him, I have never seen him do that, but suddenly the apparition went to hide within my lantern, and I sealed him there. Then, Heike moved his hand through me and my body felt warm once again. Suddenly, the lantern felt heavy, as if the souls had the weight of their bodies again, all packed up into the lantern itself. I dropped it to the ground, and I was surrounded from all directions by the faces of people lost to the forest. Heike stood close to me, and as the faces were closing in, they all stopped. Heike screamed in agony, it was like someone was tearing him limb from limb. Then, the faces all disappeared, and he stopped screaming. I cried and begged for forgiveness that Heike had to endure this so that I live. He forgave, like he always does. He told me to run, and not return until he can restore his strength. So I ran, and I left the lantern behind. I did not care for the other souls, only for Heike. But soon I would care of the other souls too. They screamed. This now the last entry she had ever wrote, before she said goodbye. I can no longer bear the torment, and neither do I want Heike or my family to bear it for me. Today I part ways with life, willingly, and join my beloved Heike among the many souls of the forest. Why was I so afraid to do this for so long, even knowing the futility of life? Truth is, I don't know why I feared ending my life. Many have done so, especially in Aikigahara. Few people truly want to wait until their true time to die. It's just that not many have the courage to choose their time. Life is fragile. I would rather have control of how I lose it. This is my final goodbye to you, dearest diary. You've been my closest friend and companion, nearly as close to me as Heike himself. If anyone is to ever read this, know my final words are not words of sadness or regret. I leave this world with a lesson to teach, that the worth of life is not on its surface. Its worth is what we assign to it. In the complexity of what it is to be alive, we ignorantly forget that the world beyond our mortal shell is many times vaster. This is not the last you see of me, as a fragment of me will always tie to this place, and these words. They are mine and mine only, and any who know me know that this notebook is me as well. I choose to die in mother's dress to symbolize the vanity 
and worthlessness of the things humans make to give purpose to the ideas they created. To each, their own meaning for life, and for me, the meaning comes after it. For me, it is Heike's love, the anchor of my sanity in a world filled with things I almost cannot grasp. Goodbye to you, my family. We will meet again when your time comes. Do not worry for me, as I shall be safe with my beloved Heike. I am crying while typing this, so please be forgiving for the big delays. I will answer any questions now that you may have. And if you want, I will write more entries later on when I calm down. Here is something you need to know of a Akigahara, for some reason. Sound acts differently in it and outside of it. When you stand outside the forest, it's completely silent. You can't hear the animals of the forest, or the voices of the spirits which reside there at all. This has to do with the fact that the forest is surrounded with hardened lava which isolates sounds. However, when standing in the forest, you can feel the vibrations of sounds very clearly. You can constantly hear the rustling of leaves even when there is no wind. You can hear muffled conversation and sometimes cries. A Kigahara is almost like its own realm, as it is the strongest bridge between the world of the living and the home of the dead. The entrance is full of tape put by tourists who are scared of being lost so they tape the trees. Deeper there are very few animals, and there are paths leading to ice caves. And even deeper there are many groves and empty patches, with large trees in the middles. It is there that many people choose to go and end their life by hanging. Now, besides all those who died by hanging there, there are also many who died of Yubasut. Yubasut is when the family takes an old parent or relative and leaves them to die in an isolated place. Many have committed Yubasut in Akigahara. So the unwilling spirits at the deepest part of the forest are the most malicious. I theorize that the many faces which Ikumi spoke of were victims of Yubasut. It is very difficult for me to write it. So bear with me. It would help me a lot of people reading would show interest so that I could feel that I am not alone in this. Last night, Heike came to me in my dreams. We walked hand in hand through Akigahara, surrounded by five foxes. The foxes spoke to us and gave us five gifts. The first fox gave us the gift of eternal love, that wherever we be taken, we will be there together. The second fox gave us the gift of understanding, that whatever we encounter is never beyond our knowledge. The third fox gave us the gift of solace, that we would not have to worry what would happen next. The fourth fox gave us the gift of forgiveness, that we could look past what made our hearts heavy. The fifth fox gave us the gift of death, that we be free from our bonds and enjoy an eternity together. Once I receive the gift of death, I will have my eternal love. I will have my understanding. I will have my solace, and I will have my forgiveness. Please come, fifth fox, I long for your gift. Another entry. There she speaks of the loss of our father. Everyone is in pain, but me most of all. I know he died because of me. I know I am to blame. Somehow I had to choice between my family and the spirits of the forest and I chose the spirits. In a sense, the spirits are my family, especially Heike, whom I can't get out of my mind. I visit Akigahara so often now. My biggest fear is that I will meet the spirit of my father. I know he is bound to the forest now because he still hasn't found me. I'm afraid he will never be able to understand why I'm doing what I am doing and will no longer love me. How selfish of me. I wish I could take this all back and not involve anyone. Just go to the forest some night. Meet Heike. End my life then and there when we fall in love. Why must everyone around me suffer? I feel so guilty. I hope one day I can compensate everyone who loves me for the harm I brought to their lives. Friends, I will be having my parting ceremony now. And I will return in a few hours. Meanwhile, please leave any questions you have. And I will answer them when I come back. Forgive me for leaving now. Please keep the thread. Thank you for taking your time and writing this. Can you tell us about specific deals you've had with spirits? An example, perhaps. And is Heike the spirit of someone who died in the forest or is he a yakai? Have you ever been inside the forest yourself? Have you encountered any spirits? Hello friends, I am back. Time to respond. For everyone who thanked me for sharing. You are very welcome, excuse me for the time you had to wait. As for you. It's easy to dismiss something beyond your understanding. I am not mad at you. Just know that I don't want this kind of attitude here as this is a very personal thing I am sharing here. I would appreciate it if you took your memes elsewhere. As described in Nikimi's diaries, he is a handsome looking man. 
They are in love and she wants to join him in the overworld, and he is bound to this world because he's in love with her. There are two options. Either he truly is the spirit of a man who died unloved, and now has fallen in mutual love with Ikumi. Or, there is an option which I hate to think of. He could also be a type of yakai that masks itself as a human spirit and lures innocent humans with love in order to make them commit self-end. The second option, however, is unlikely thankfully, because in Ikumi's diaries she describes how much pain and torment he endured to protect her. A yakai's true nature is usually exposed when there is danger to the yakai itself, as they are very selfish. Yet Haiki suffers so that she can go on. I've been to Aikigahara only a few times in my life. And a few times I spoke with the spirit of my grandfather for advice. He told me he will only pass peacefully when both me and Ikimi do because his duty is to ensure we have a good life. But walking through the forest I caught all sorts of glimpses of different beings. It's not as scary when you think of them as people seeking solace. Another time. I was in the forest searching for a medicinal herb that could help my mother. There was this spirit of an old man who was a victim of Yubasut. He was left with his cane to die in the middle of the grove. The old man did not pass because the cane being far from where he died represents to him how he died far from home. As Yubasut was a forbidden act and had to be done in an isolated place. So, we made a deal. I would find his cane and put it down next to the tree in which his spirit resided so he could pass. And he would tell me where the herb grows. I returned the cane and put it down. It was the first time I saw a spirit pass as he dissipated into a beam of light that pierced through the dense leaves and his voice whispered in my head the direction into which I should go to find the herb. I ended up actually finding this herb, and it helped delay my mother's illness. I believe that thanks to that she slept and did not die immediately. This other time I witnessed a Yuki Ana. She is the woman of the snow. I was at the lake as it had frozen over and I wanted to cut out some ice to bring home to preserve the fish we had as I knew we wouldn't be catching any soon because of how cold it was. Then it began snowing. And I felt her looking at me. I turned to her. And she was very pale, almost indistinct from the snow. The only things differentiating her was her black hair and blue lips. She is a malicious spirit of a woman who died in a snowstorm. Spirits like her should not be reasoned with. So I ran with snow up to my shins but I ran very fast because if she were to breathe on me I would freeze to death. Thankfully, she is slow as she floats gracefully above the snow. What amazing writing and story. Can you tell us a bit more about what your mentor has taught you? With all the secrecy necessary if it is some kind of sacred knowledge. My mentor has taught me that all spirits that can interact with you in this world are here because they have a purpose to complete. He explained to me that I should treat the spirits just as I treat people. Not fear them, but try to understand them. He taught me chants, rituals, offerings, and how to initiate conversation or materialization of apparitions. I have communed with the spirits of my ancestors many times when I was facing personal difficulties and they always gave me sound advice. Also, this one time I helped the spirit of an old man pass peacefully by methods my mentor taught me. How does one commune, OP? Can you teach us? The way to commune depends for the reason that the spirit is there. If the spirit is in love with a living human, you must either be that human or someone very important to that human. If the spirit is lost, you must guide it to where it was supposed to be. If the spirit is angry, you calm it. Most spirits though, to commune with them, you must make promises and deals. You get this and that from the spirit in exchange for you helping the spirit complete whatever task it has that is binding it to the physical realm. You cannot summon a spirit, as summoning is calling upon them against their will. However, you can plead them to come to you, or sometimes, they will appear out of their own will. This entry I find very interesting, as it speaks of love between realms of existence as well. My dearest Haiki, sometimes I am very conflicted, at times it all seems natural to me. To love you is no different than how my parents love each other. We are both human. Other times, I cry at nights because I cannot hold you. I long for your embrace, yet you can just pass through me as if you are a gust of wind. But I love you, because I know you are not your physical form. Even if you were alive, I would love that same essence, and not the vessel in which it is in. Yet, I wish for us to exist in the same dimension. Many times have I thought of ending my life to join with you. My love with you transcend my love of physical things. I have not told anyone of you, as much as my family is rooted in the world of spirits. 
They still vainly fear for my physical life more than they care for my true happiness, which I can only achieve outside of this world. I think my grandfather knows about you, dearest Heike. He is watching over me, and you share the same realm. I believe he understands and approves, otherwise he would have interfered already. But then again, perhaps he knows you are my way to pass, and I am part of his way to pass. To love a spirit is to set aside all shallow ideas of the physical world for the benefit of a more profound understanding of what truly matters. To love a spirit is to know that there is no such thing as death. It is merely a means through which we continue to a different stage of life. Must be very hard for anyone who doesn't live here, if impossible, to experience the same thing. From what I read on the computer, the outsiders are obsessed with physical things. They kill for resources, they are not at balance, they do not care for one another, only for their own selfish benefits. They invest their money in surgeries to adhere their physical image to the standard created by some other selfish human who makes money off of this. I believe, if I were to tell an outsider that I am in love with a the spirit they would laugh at my face. To them, you love the shell of the person, and not who he truly is. I have come to the conclusion, an outsider has never experienced true love. True love is to love regardless of physical features or social status. Yes, I describe Heike as beautiful and handsome, but not because his features, but his heart. Many times we were at the Grove together, talking about all the things I wish to know in life. He is such a beautiful man. Eager for knowledge, we never run out of things to speak of. I wish someone understood, but I don't care that nobody does. Because Heike does. He always understood. I love him so deeply. Interesting. Thank you. And how do you go about leading them? How do they speak and what sorts of deals do they prefer? Some speak through feelings. They look at you and you just understand. I don't know how to explain but you have intuition for that. Others, they speak directly into your mind. There is no sound but you can hear them just like you hear your own thoughts. Sometimes this is very invasive and you have no control of it. Others, they speak with actual voices that can be heard by others outside of the living person they are addressing. If by lead you mean the example of a lost spirit. If you promise to return them to where they belong they will just follow you as you walk. They might even show you visions of how they got where they are if you meditate enough around them. The deals they prefer all depend on their cause of death and their purpose in life. Undeath. As I said they are all bound to this realm for a reason and if you help them pass they will give what they can in return. Can you give guidance for strengthening intuition and these abilities? Does everyone have this ability? Are there higher spirits as well as lower spirits? Where do humans fall? Spirits and humans are equal. That is the beauty of the spirit world, there is no class. Your purpose is your purpose. You could have a spirit whose purpose is to save the world from exploding and another whose purpose is to taste a dish it never ate in its life and the spirits are equally important because for them it's the single thing keeping them from reincarnating. Not everyone can commune with the spirits. The spirits only choose to show themselves to those who they believe can aid them in their purpose. And they are extremely weary to outsiders, sometimes even being violent towards them. Some humans do not even go through the spirit phase and pass peacefully because they have completed their lifelong goal. The only way to strengthen your intuition is to try and be understanding. By befriending the spirits you learn better what they want and that way you can sense their raw emotions more efficiently. Your story fascinates me. I'm really sorry for what happened to you and I thank you for sharing it on 4chan. I would like to ask you a question. Let's say that I meet a spirit that I don't want to speak to. If it notices, would it be angry? Or would it just go away? I'm just asking in the remote case I meet a spirit. The most important thing with a spirit is respect and manners. If you don't wish to speak to a spirit and it is not a malicious spirit with the intent of killing innocents, you have to refuse kindly. By saying that you cannot aid them in their passing, apologize and wish that they pass peacefully. More often than not, people are afraid because they forget that the spirits are humans just like them, but in a different state physically speaking. I hope that you enjoyed tonight's broadcast. If you enjoyed tonight's story, then please subscribe to the channel as more green texts will appear daily. A new broadcast will appear when the clock strikes midnight central time.
remember to check out the Odyssey page in the description for a second archive of the channel's videos.